let's talk, Maheta, about the big story of the summer and one we've spoken on the pod about a lot, and that's player welfare and your legal case. Now, alongside European leagues and other European players' unions, you're suing FIFA because of, and I quote, the overloaded and unworkable football calendar. The obvious question is, what jurisdiction does the European Commission have over a global body like FIFA? So, the, um, so, so first of all, we need to clarify that, that basically we have started two legal cases. So there's one case that we as PFA, uh, the French Union, the Italian Union and FIFA Pro Europe has started in Belgium before a Belgium court. Because in reality, what we've done is we've sued both FIFA and the Belgian Federation. So that, that was the anchor to be able to, to then, you know, uh, file the claim in, in Belgium. And um, we have filed that claim on the basis of the potential breach of the European Convention of Human Rights, and more specifically around the rights to um, uh, holidays, the right to paid vacation, and the right to collective bargaining. Because although people tend to forget it, football players are employees like any other employee. Yes, very privileged one who do, you know, what they love uh, as a profession, but they remain employees and hence they remain subject to same rights and protection as a normal employee. So we as a union have filed a claim um, before a Belgian court on the basis of a breach of the European uh, Charter for Human Rights. So that, that's the, the, the first procedure, procedure that was launched about three or, f- or four weeks ago. Um, we have now announced, announced sorry, this week um, that we're going to start a second uh, procedure before the European Commission uh, and this is a procedure that we'll be doing um, hand in hand with the leagues so we have created a, what we've called the coalition that would be basically FIFA Pro Europe on which uh, so I sit on the board of FIFA Pro Europe uh, and the leagues which is basically the Premier League, Serie A and La Liga who together have decided to team up and um, in that case it's not so much about the right to holiday but rather what we're challenging is the ability of FIFA to be able to be both competition organizer and regulator, you know. Um, and, and, and I must say that the situation is so bad that we've even managed to put around the same table people who typically don't even talk to each other. Because it, it was funny because in some of those meetings, in our cases, we actually have a, a pretty decent relationship with the Premier League, but in other, in other countries, the league and the union, I mean, barely talk to each other. And yet FIFA has, has managed to unify us to, to say that that, that that situation is just not sustainable and not tenable. Are you optimistic of success? Because it seems to me solving the problem of, of too many games is almost impossible, especially when so many of them are lucrative friendlies or pre-season tours that the clubs are very keen on. I think it's, it's important to, to be clear on the fact, and, and I've said that to FIFA directly as well, is this, this is not an attack on FIFA. At least from our perspective, it's not an attack on FIFA. What we're saying is... We play too many games. What we're saying is that each competition look at, the, at their games in silo, and hence each of them would say to you, I actually fulfill the duty that I have towards you because if I only look in isolation to my calendar, it's fine. So the reason for which we have gone against FIFA is not because we have a personal issue with FIFA. In fact, to be honest with you, a lot of stuff they do, I'm actually absolutely fine with and I'm supportive of. But on the calendar specifically, what is happening is FIFA is the only body that, is, that would be able to apply standards across the board worldwide. And they are, they are the parents of football, and hence it makes sense for us to actually file a claim against them in the hope that they will be able to apply standards that would apply across the board that would prevent clubs to do nonsensical post-season tours, that would prevent UEFA from expanding even more the Champions League format or, or creating new competition, that would prevent potentially FIFA themselves to creating no, new competition, which frankly do not make much sense other than generating new income, you know, to be able to, to, to probably fulfill commitment they have with their own federation, who ultimately are, are their voters. You say it's not a personal attack on FIFA, but Gianni Infantino takes things very personally. It, it, it's a pity because it, it shouldn't be the case. Uh, as I said to you before, the reality that FIFA has changed, and I think since he has joined FIFA, I think they have improved. That, that's my honest personal imp- opinion compared to what FIFA used to be. I, I think there's, there has been an improvement and we need to give credit to him and to his administration for that. Um, but at the same time, I, I think sometimes, you know, when you have a professional relation with someone and you behave like grown-ups, sometimes you disagree, Kevin, you know, and, and sometimes if you try hard to try to reach an agreement, sometimes you need to, to agree to disagree and, and let a third party 
decide what is right and what is not right and, and try to find a solution. So we see this as, as, a, as being professional. You know, my job is to try to do the best to protect the players, sometimes even against their own wishes, because if you ask players, they love to play. But, but it comes to a stage where for as much as you love to play, you know, you cannot have players such as the one who went to the Euros defending the three Lions. There's one specific player who has played 130 games in two years, Kevin. But, but, but then, you know, when he plays on the pitch, the fans don't see in the background how many games he's played. And people expect him to be, you know, buzzing and running and being at the top level. And you feel sorry for people who are such nice people, super committed. They love to play for the country. But frankly, we have asked them to do stuff that are humanly at the limit. It's, it's literally at the limit. One more question on this, Maheta, and it's one I'm very interested in. When it comes to player workload in this country, are you also consulting with the League Managers Association about this? Do they tend to agree with you that players are playing too much? Yeah, I've got a very good relationship with Richard Bevan, you know, and, and we work closely with the, with the LMA. I think what we have seen, um, you know, Kieran and Kevin, is this has gone from being an issue that seemed to be limited to a very kind of small number of privileged players who, you know, some of the most skeptical fans would say, you know, come on, you make a lot of money, get on with it, you know, you're going to be okay. From an issue that right now, industry-wide, everyone sees as being a problem because it's simply harming the quality of what you see on the pitch. So it's no longer just a question of saying, you know what, come on, guys, you make a lot of money, get on with it. No, 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 this is, kill- this is killing the game. And, and what I found very interesting is that even the most skeptical fans, even the leagues, even the, so everyone across the board sees that this is harming the game and everyone sees the consequences of that. So, you know, when we see the FA being forced to scrap the replays, let's be very clear on the fact that this is a direct consequence of the pressure put by UEFA and FIFA decision to expand the calendar because something has to give. And the ones who are, who, are, who are affected by scrapping the replays of the FA Cup are not the big clubs. Those are the smaller clubs, the more modest clubs, the more, the, the more modest players. You know, and, and this is only the start. I can tell you from now that what will happen next is there will be pressure to, to reduce the number of clubs in the Premier League from 20 to 18. And the one who pay the price ain't going to be the big players. Don't worry about that. It's going to be the, 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 more, the more humble, the more modest players. And that's what we keep saying to the players when we go to visits. And to be honest with you, across the pyramid, from League 2 all the way to the Premier League, they completely understand that this is an industry-wide issue that needs urgent addressing.